So you're looking to become a security operations center, also known as a SOC analyst or a cybersecurity analyst, but you have no idea where to start. Well, in this video, I want to share with you a clear step-by-step -step actionable path to becoming a cybersecurity or a SOC analyst. If you've been here before, thank you so much for your support and tuning back in. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Kaiser Clark. I have almost seven years of experience in cybersecurity, and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. And I'm here to help you grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. Full disclosure here, I have never held the title of SOC or cybersecurity analyst. I'm not going to try to pretend to be someone I'm not. However, I feel qualified to make this video and to make recommendations for this career path for several reasons. For starters, I spent six years in cyber defense operations in the United States Air Force active duty, so it's not like I don't have any defensive cybersecurity experience at all. Matter of fact, I have more defense experience than offense security experience, even though I work as a full-time penetration tester currently. Furthermore, I am very well connected within the industry, as you may or may not know, and I have a lot of good friends who are currently cybersecurity analysts, and I am fully aware of the career paths that they took, and I talk to cybersecurity analysts on a very regular basis. Lastly, I get job offers to become a cybersecurity or a stock analyst on a weekly basis. I get several phone calls, several emails, several DMs per week to work as a cybersecurity analyst. I simply decline these job offers because I would much rather work as a penetration tester because that is where my passion lies. So number one, you have to commit to the journey and you have to be adaptable. Cybersecurity analyst is probably the most in demand and most common first position to break into when it comes to the cybersecurity field. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. There is still limited cybersecurity analyst slots in the job market today. And because there's limited slots, you have to outwork and outshine your competition, which are the other people who are applying for these same positions. And in order to do that, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the extra effort. You have to go above and beyond to consistently get better and you have to demonstrate your skills to potential employers. And it's not going to be easy and you have to be resilient if you wanna break into this field because you will face rejections. You will get many no's and you simply can't take no for an answer. And you have to keep trying and you have to keep applying for positions. And you have to have a never quit attitude. If you give up, you will never become a cybersecurity analyst. Furthermore, when I say you have to be adaptable, you have to be willing to constantly change. The career plans that you make for yourself are almost always going to get derailed one way or another. And that's a good thing, in my opinion. That's what makes cybersecurity fun. Cybersecurity is always changing. The industry is always changing. The job market is always changing. What worked yesterday might not work today. And while this is a great path that you can start with, don't be afraid to veer off the path. Don't be afraid to add your own flair to the path because that's what it's going to take for you to break into this field. Set number two, create a LinkedIn account, fill out your profile all the way and post consistently. I have talked about LinkedIn a lot on my channel. You need to create a LinkedIn profile, you need to fill it out the right way, and you need to fill it out all the way, and you need to be posting once a week at minimal. And the most impactful post that you can make is when you get a certification, take a screenshot of your certification, put it in LinkedIn, and then write a story on the journey to that certification. Why did you decide to go for the certification? What struggles did you have? Did you have fun? What did you learn? What resources did you use? Help other people get the same certification that you just got. What did you expect out of the certification? What did you get out of the certification that you didn't expect? And just write a story about that certification from start to finish. People love those posts. They eat it up. But those are the most valuable posts that you can make on LinkedIn. So if you're getting certifications, which you should be, if you want to become a cybersecurity analyst, we're gonna get into certifications a little bit later, you need to be posting about this every time you get one. Furthermore, if you are completing try hacking rooms in Hack the Box Sherlock's, once again, take the screenshot of the badge that you earned and put it on LinkedIn and write a story about it. Why did you do that room? Why did you do that Sherlock? What did you learn? What did you know before? Was it hard? Was it easy? overall like where did you struggle and just write a story people love that kind of content and not only do people like that kind of content they like consistency so if you are posting like i said once a week at least people are going to take notice people respect discipline and people love work ethic. it 
So the more you post on LinkedIn, the better. Now I wouldn't recommend posting several times a day. Personally, I only post once or twice a day, but I do post every single day on LinkedIn. And my LinkedIn following is at almost 23,000 people right now at the time of this recording, and it's growing faster than many other people out there. And the reason why is because I'm just consistent. I just show up every single day. Day in, day out, I'm showing up on LinkedIn, and I'm posting valuable content. The more valuable content you post, the more people are going to take notice. And just in case you're wondering, why would you want people to take notice? It's because hiring managers and recruiters, they're on LinkedIn a lot. Like recruiters are surfing LinkedIn all day, every day, looking for people to hire. And if you're not on a platform, you're messing up. And that's actually how I found my job. I was completing Hack the Bunch machines every single week and I would post them on LinkedIn and I'd write a little bit about it. And people started to take notice. People love, people want to grind. People love hustle and people notice that and they respect that. And I had my open to work banner up at the time and someone reached out to me and basically said, Hey, love what you're doing. I see you're working hard. I'm not a hiring manager, but my company might be willing to hire you. Give me your resume if you're interested and I'll forward it to my company. And that's exactly what I did. And a handful of days later, I got a call from a hiring manager and three weeks after that call, I was hired and that's how I got the job that I'm currently sitting in right now all because of LinkedIn. I did not apply to Indeed. I did not apply on LinkedIn. I did not apply to ZipRecruiter. I literally just gave my resume to someone who reached out to me on LinkedIn and I'm in the position that I'm in now and I am very grateful for that. And that's why I constantly talk about how important LinkedIn is because you can reach so many people from the comfort of your home. You don't even need to leave your home. It's so easy to do and people are just neglecting it. Step number three, you wanna be doing hack the box and try hack me every single day for an hour a day. I recommend try hack me first and here we are on try hack me. These are the learning paths and these are the learning paths that I would recommend in this order if you want to become a cybersecurity analyst. So I would start with cybersecurity 101, pre-security, introduction to cybersecurity and complete beginner. You can pretty much complete these in any order you want it doesn't really matter as long as you're doing these foundational ones, which are the green color. So if you see green, that means foundational. I would do all of those first. And then once you get all of those done, I would do SOC level one. And then after SOC level one, I would do cyber defense. Then after cyber defense, I would do the CompTIA Pentest Plus, which is an offensive security learning path. But if you want to be a good defender, you need to understand at least the basics of what the attackers are doing. And I think the content appendix plus is great for that. And if you want to go above and beyond, you should be doing the content appendix plus. And then once you get that done, you want to go sock level two, which is kind of your capstone for the cybersecurity analyst stuff on try hack me. Then after you complete all those learning paths on try hack me, you want to graduate over to hack the box. Now for my cybersecurity analysts, you don't want to do machines. Pen testers, you want to do machines, but cybersecurity analysts, you want to do Sherlock. Sherlock's are the defensive equivalent to a hack the box machine. And I would start with the very easy machines. You can see they're in this purple color and then work your way to the easy and then go to the medium, hard, and then the insane, etc. And these Sherlock's are going to be very good hands-on activities for you to do while you are studying your other certifications. So I would definitely would be doing at least one Sherlock a week. Once you get the try hack me learning paths done out of the way, you should be doing try hack me for an hour a day, every single day. Once you get all those learning paths done, switch over to Sherlock's and I would do at least one Sherlock per week to keep the skills sharp. Set number four, foundational certifications. And the certifications that I recommend are the Conte A+, the Network+, Plus, Security+, Plus, and the CYSA+. Plus. Now you can skip the CompTIA A+. I actually don't have that certification myself. And a good alternative to the CompTIA A+, is the Practical Help Desk course from TCM Security. As you can see here, it is a free course. And they're actually about to come out with a certification. By the time you watch this video, the certification might be out. But the certification is definitely an alternative to the CompTIA A+. And I think that's what TCM Security is trying to do. They're trying to make a CompTIA A+, competitor 
So this is definitely worth checking out if you don't want to fork over the money for the Conte A+. But regardless, you do not need the Conte A+. You can definitely skip it. The moral of the story, what you need here is you need the practical help desk skills in the computer fundamentals. With that being said, I don't recommend skipping over the Comte Network Plus because the networking fundamentals you're going to learn in that certification is going to pay dividends later in your career and it's going to apply to pretty much everything you do as a cybersecurity analyst. I also do not recommend skipping Security Plus. It's almost a mandatory certification in this field. Matter of fact, it was mandatory for my job as a client systems technician in the United States Air Force. It was my first certification and it was mandatory for me to get. And the Security Plus is going to open up many, many doors for you, especially if you're considering working within the United States government. Next, we have the CUSA Plus, which is a great certification to renew all your other CONTI certifications. And it's going to be a little bit easier to get because you're, if you're following the track, you are going to be very well versed within the CompTIA world. However, if you want to add a different vendor that's not CompTIA, you want to get out of CompTIA land because it's nice to have multiple vendors on your certification stack, I recommend the Cisco CyberOps Associate. And if you're interested in learning more about the Cisco CyberOps Associate, I have an entire video dedicated to that certification. So definitely check that out if you want to see more about that one. If you're getting value out of the video so far, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. Set number five, start looking for a job. So if you don't already have an IT job, you should definitely be looking for some sort of IT job. And you can honestly potentially skip straight to cybersecurity analysts. However, that's a little unlikely. So you might want to consider jobs at the help desk or system administration jobs. But if you can get, if you can go straight to SOC analyst or straight to cybersecurity analyst, definitely go for it. And one time I saw a post on LinkedIn talking about if you could skip straight to a pen testing job, should you do it? And I know we're not talking about pen testing, we're talking about cybersecurity analysts, but I think this analogy still applies. So follow along with me here for a second. This person buried the question, hey, if you can skip the job that you want to take, should you do it? And a lot of people are like, no, those help desk skills are essential. Oh no, those entry level IT jobs are essential. And I agree with that. Those are definitely great jobs to get your feet wet in. Uh, you learn a lot of the foundational skills in those entry level IT jobs. However, if you can skip to the destination that you want to go to, by all means, skip it and go to the destination that you want to go to. If you want to be a pen tester, go straight to pen tester. If you want to go straight to a cybersecurity analyst, go straight to cybersecurity analyst. You don't have to take these entry level IT jobs if you don't have to. And I would say that's a last resort. Matter of fact, I would definitely do what you can to go to the job you want. And I think a good analogy here is the NBA, right? I know college is mandatory now in the NBA, but back in the day, there was NBA players that would go straight out of high school to the NBA. They would just skip college. And why would they skip college? Well, their ultimate goal is to be in the NBA. And if they have a chance to go to the NBA, they're gonna take it, right? Why risk getting an injury in college and in ruining your career? Go straight to the NBA. In this case, go straight to pen testing. Go straight to size security analyst. There is no rules. And only gatekeepers are saying, oh, you have to start at the help desk. Oh, you have to start at system engineering. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. You do what you want to do. Go straight to the position you want to go to. There's no hard rules here. The help desk skills definitely help. System administration jobs, entry level IT jobs. Yes, they're going to help you. But if you can skip straight to the job and go to where you want to go right away, then by all means, go for it. With that being said, you want to learn how to write a resume. You want to learn how to write cover letters. You want to learn how to conduct yourself in an interview, both technical and non-technical interviews. And if you want to learn how to do that stuff, there's plenty of resources out there to teach you how to do this. There's books, there's other YouTube channels that teach you stuff. I unfortunately don't have any videos for you just yet. If you want to see that kind of content, leave a comment down below and say, hey, I want to see a resume video. Oh, I want to see a cover letter video. I want to see an interview video. Leave a comment and let me know if that's the kind of content you want to see. And if I get enough demand, then I'll put it on the channel because this channel is here to serve you. The best video I have for you at this point in time is my soft skills video. This video is all the soft skills that you're going to want to focus on when it comes to your cybersecurity career. That video, unfortunately, didn't perform as good as my other videos, which tells me a lot of people aren't putting 
that much time in their soft skills or they're just not interested in it. But I'm telling you right now, your soft skills are just as important as your technical skills. So if you want to learn more about soft skills, watch that video. And if you want to see more soft skill related video, just leave a comment and let me know what you want to know. Set number six, learn Linux. Linux is an essential skill within the cybersecurity field. I actually also have a video dedicated for Linux resources if you're interested in learning about the different resources for Linux. However, if you're doing try hack me and hack the blocks all the time, like I recommended earlier in this video, you're gonna be pretty well versed with, in Linux at this point in time. But if you're not versed in Linux at this point in your journey, you definitely need to take a time out and take some courses related to Linux. Set number seven, learn how to program, learn how to code. Coding is what separates a average cybersecurity professional from a good cybersecurity professional. And if you want to get started with coding, I have a video dedicated to just that. So check that out if you want to learn more about getting started with coding. But in a nutshell, you can choose any programming language that you want. If you are undecided, you can choose Python. That is what I decided to go with. And Python is very beginner friendly and it is very popular within the cybersecurity community and you can't go wrong if you choose Python. However, if there's another programming language that you want to learn, definitely by all means go for it. So number eight, hands-on certification. So at this point in the path, you definitely want to start considering hands-on certifications because up to this point, everything has been model of choice certifications and hands-on certifications is what separates you from everyone else. And I would highly suggest considering the following certifications. First up, we have the Practical Security Analyst Associate from TCM Security, that's a PSAA. We have the OFSEC Defensive Analyst, which is the OSDA, the Hack the Box CDSA, that's the Certified Defense Security Analyst, and we have the Blue Team Level 1. You honestly can't go wrong with either one of these certifications. I would just choose one that suits your fancy. And if you are interested in learning more about the PSA, I have an entire video dedicated to that certification. So check it out if you are interested in that. Set number nine. So at this point, you are most likely a cybersecurity analyst or a SOC analyst, and your goal is to level up. So you want to go from analyst one to analyst two, or even analyst three or four. And in order to do that, you need to continuously train and get better. And what I would recommend to you is to go after some specialty certifications. And the ones I recommend are the OSTH, that's the OFSEC Threat Hunter, the OSIR, that's the OFSEC Instant Responder, or the Blue Team Level 2. And if you're interested in learning more about the OSTH, I have a video for that right here and i have a video for the osir as well so if you want to learn more about those two certifications i have you covered so that is my recommended path to success when it comes to becoming a cybersecurity or a SOC analyst so to recap to become a cybersecurity or a SOC analyst i recommend step number one commit to the journey be adaptable step number two create a linkedin profile post every single day step number three do you try hack me and hack the box every single day for an hour a day? Set number four, do your foundational certifications. That's the Conti A+, Network Plus, Security Plus, and the CYSA Plus. You can sub out the CYSA Plus for the Cyber Ops Associate from Cisco, and you can skip the A+, if you want. Set number five, start applying for jobs. You can most likely land a cybersecurity analyst or a SOC analyst type job at this point. However, you're not guaranteed a job, so you might need to take a help desk or a system administration job first. Regardless, definitely get a job if you don't already have one in IT at this point. Set number six, learn Linux. Step number seven, learn how to code. Set number eight, do a hands-on certification such as the PSAA, the OSDA, Blue Team Level 1, or the CDSA. And then step number nine, take it above and beyond and go after some more specialty certifications such as the OSTH, the OSIR, or the Blue Team Level 2. If you got value out of this video and you enjoyed it and you're still considering other cybersecurity career options, you definitely need to check out my cybersecurity engineer roadmap video right here. Or if you're considering penetration tester, you need to check out my pen tester roadmap video right here. Either one of these videos is going to be great for you if you're exploring your career options. Click watch now and I'll see you there.